Teachers, what is the cringiest thing you've seen a student do? Story 23. Oh, I caught the student on Google search attempting to look me up. He spelled my name wrong, and my name is very common, so I wasn't worried. I sent him home since it was an after-school homework club and then went through the rest of the history which included boobs, naked women, Megan Fox nudes, and Megan Fox panties. One of the other students in the class kind of picked up on what was happening and mentioned that he has also been kicked out of the public library for similar reasons. Story 22 My husband teaches English at a middle school. He brought some creative writing assignments home to grade, and since I'm an assistant teacher for much younger humans, kindergarten, he drafted me into helping him sort through the mess and grade them. We've made good progress through the stack when I pick up a paper that had a kiss mark near the name in lipstick. Okay, that's odd, but I'm used to working with kids who are only just figuring out bathroom habits. A little lipstick on a report is hardly weird in my book, plus middle school. Then I see the name, Hun, who is R. Husband, without missing a beat, R is this goth kid who looks like a rainbow threw up on him after having marathon sex with a unicorn. I look back at the kiss mark. Glitter lipstick, nice shade choice if the kid is going for goth pale. I read his creative writing assignment. I get up halfway through to go pour myself more wine. It's extremely well written gay porn featuring my husband and another teacher at the school. The kid is going places. I don't know what those places are, but he's going places. Story 21. I taught fourth grade last year, and I had a student who was 12 years old, middle school age, held back a few years. She always did very odd things to try to impress her classmates, but they were relatively tame, until there was a line in the bathroom, and she took her pants off, squatted over the trash can, and peed. Four or five girls came running out of the bathroom and told on her story 20. Had a kid who legitimately believed he was a Sith, like from Star Wars. His helicopter mom would come flying down to the school, crying religious discrimination if you told him otherwise. He would relax his throat and talk in a deep voice and say it was his real voice, but he disguised his voice to not scare his human brethren. On free dress days, he'd wear an all-denim outfit with high waters and denim vests over a denim shirt. I had him for science, so he'd blurt out things about alchemy from an anime he was into whenever we were working with the periodic table. He also had a girlfriend who lived in Mexico who was also his cousin. Story 19. Had an 8th grade girl pretend to pass out because she was upset. She got written up for screaming that another girl was a fucking bitch in the middle of a science lesson, then got upset when that other girl didn't also get in trouble for looking at her wrong. In the dean's office, she was so upset that she pretended to faint complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale and then laid on the floor until we were forced to call an ambulance. Before the ambulance came, mom walked in. She worked right across the street and said, damn it, Jennifer, we're not doing this again. So evidently, this was a regular happening around their house. At this point, the girl squinted her eyes open but refused to actually get up. When the squad got there, they checked her vitals and basically knew she was fine. They had to take her because we can't take chances with this stuff in schools. We all just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. So yeah, that was cringy. Story 18. I had a couple of Markiplier or fangirls a couple years ago that just gave me the heebie-jeebies. Group of about 20 kids that run up and down the hall shouting about memes. One of which, when asked what he did over the weekend, started with, So, do you know the... While making Earth Day posters, one kid tried to disguise pot leaves as palm trees. There were several I love trees on it. Earth Day was on 422, so he also wrote the first two with a swirl at the end so that it looked like he'd written 420, but it just looked like 4 slash 202. I probably should keep a list, but they happen so often I don't think I'd ever be able to keep up with it. Story 17 my friend and I got busted on day one of 8th grade social studies passing a crude drawing of a classmate if ours getting spit roasted by two large dicked men wearing party hats. I didn't think the teacher looked at it until I got summoned to the office during next period. The principal unfolded the drawing and says to us, Can you boys explain to me what this is? I knew I was fucked. My friend reaches over the desk and grabs it, holds it close to his face like he's scrutinizing it and says to the principal, it looks like a picture of classmate having sex with two large men, and I think they're wearing party hats. I fucking lost it. My friend got expelled midway through that year for threatening to kill the principal during math class. 
Story 16. I was a volunteer lifeguard at a middle school for part of the year. This school also has a swimming month in the gym classes, where students must wear bathing suits bought ordered via financial aid at the uniform store. There was a highly overweight girl in one of the classes, and she didn't seem to be aware of the standard issue bathing suits. The gym teacher sent home reminders the week before, but I guess she forgot. This girl was picked on a lot in general, and always kept to herself. She was very shy. She never spoke. If you called on her to answer a question in front of the class, she would get teary. On the first day, the other students showed up wearing the uniform bathing suits, but she was wearing her bathing suit from home. It also wasn't a particularly pretty bathing suit as it looked very old ladyish and had a bright orange Hawaiian shirt type of pattern. She stuck out, which you could see in her body language really bothered her. The gym teacher ended up calling her out in front of the whole class, giving her a lecture and giving her a detention for not wearing her uniform because that was the rule. Her face turned bright red and she just stood there silently while other kids stared at her and giggled. You could tell that she wanted to cry and that her soul had just crumbled. The lecture went on for a very long time. This was a gym teacher who didn't like it when students disobeyed the rules. I was sitting off to the side, wringing my hands and bouncing my knee in secondhand embarrassment. I wish she had just read the reminder. Poor sweet child, always read the reminders. Story 15, not a teacher, sorry to be that person. In middle school, my friends and I were not in the popular crowd, but one of my friends had a huge crush on the most popular boy in school who was also a major asshole. So one day, she brought him a bouquet of flowers and a heart-shaped box of chocolates. She brought the gift to him before school where he and his douchey friends hung out and asked him to be her boyfriend. I happened to be nearby and witnessed the whole thing. They laughed and laughed at her until she ran away crying. Despite riding the same bus as her, I never saw her again that school year. I saw her that summer since she lived nearby and she told me she transferred schools because of the incident. Poor girl was brave enough to give it a shot just to be literally laughed out of the school. Story 14. I teach 8th grade. This student had talked to me previously in private about how the girl he liked was in my class the same period he was. He said that they had almost dated when they were both at their previous school before transferring to the one where I teach. On top of that, all the other students were aware that he had a major crush on this girl. So one day, he finished his classwork early and apparently he just couldn't take the hormones raging inside of him anymore. He blurts out, loud enough for everyone in class to hear, Look, girl's name, are you gonna date me? Or what? I pretend to work through this while cringing so hard on the inside. I see every other student in the room work through this, from shock to laughter to pure amazement and curiosity as to both why he would choose this moment and what on earth her response would be. The girl very politely said, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now. Thanks for asking though. TLDRA kid asked his crush out loudly in front of the class only to be rejected. Story 13. This may not be what you mean by cringiest, but it made me cringe. I'm a middle school teacher, and a boy in my homeroom, I'll call him Zeke, was way behind in social development. As a favor, I gave him tips about getting along with people. I told him one good idea was to say nice things about them. So the next period he picked up a little statue that a girl in our homeroom had made in art, and he said, that's a really nice figure. She shrieked at him, Zeke! Put that down, you'll break it. Then she grabbed it out of his hand, glared at him, and stomped off. He slunk away and probably never talked to anyone again. Please like and subscribe if you made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Wow, wow, wow. Story 12. Not a teacher, but when I was in grade 9, my grades weren't the best. On the day of the big graduation ceremony, they came and told me I didn't have enough credits to graduate but they're passing me anyway because I just barely squeaked by. I thought, great, I made it. So I went along with my classmates to the ceremony. So there we were, a group of about 300 kids in rows and rows of chairs on one side of the gym and all the parents and families of the kids on the other side. They started calling up the kids one by one to receive their certificates. And once they were called up, they all stood on these bleachers at the back of the stage for a big photo at the end of the ceremony. So the rows and rows of chairs we were in slowly emptied out as the names were called one by one. Then when they got to my row, my name wasn't called. The guys on each side of me got called, but not me. Finally, the very last kid was called up 
and there I was still sitting there, all alone in the middle of this vast layout of empty chairs in the gym. People were staring, whispering, pointing. Guess that kid didn't graduate. Must be a real dummy. I never felt lower in all my life. I wanted to run out of there, but I was too scared to draw even more attention to myself. So I just sat there. I still cringe to this day when I think about it. On the bright side, I was able to walk out of that hellacious school with its abusive teachers and bullying students for the very last time. Story 11. We were doing a project involving postcards in the Silk Road, which I was hanging in the hallway. Some kid wrote the postcard out and used it as an opportunity to include a part in the letter asking a girl classmate to the upcoming dance. He came to me and asked if I could make sure his letter was at eye level on the bulletin board outside my classroom for her to see. At that moment, every dumb thing I have ever done to impress a girl had flashed before my eyes. I could only imagine the congregation of his classmates outside my class reading this note and never letting him live it down. I wanted to spare him, but I figured my job was to educate, not shield him from how cruel the world can be for passionate people like ourselves. I ended up obliging. I managed to catch her reaction by chance while I was still putting up the bulletin board display. The look on her face when she read it was awfully beauty f. And she did show a friend, but everything went better than expected for the kid. She agreed to go to the dance with him and that was the end of that. I'm sorry I don't have a better ending. Story 10. I taught 5th grade recorder class as part of general music, so every kid had to play them for a quarter. It was fucking awful. 15. 20 kids half of whom were budding criminals playing out of tune on plastic recorders. I was in the middle of bitching them out yet again when I heard what sounded like a sneeze combined with a squeak. I look over, and the dumpiest, runkiest boy in the class, the gross kid, if you will, had sneezed with his recorder in his mouth and proceeded to blow clear snot through it and onto his fingers. He sat there for like 15 seconds dumbfounded, with that orange clear plastic recorder hanging out of his mouth. Finally, I told him to just put it on the table. A few minutes later, I accidentally knocked it on the floor and it broke, justifying my throwing it away after class. I bought a new one at the 99C store because I was not giving that damn thing to anyone else. Story 9. I teach middle school math. The dabbing after answering a question correctly on the board got old really fast. Of course, one kid insisted that it was funny every single time, and it was so hard to watch, but I had to let him keep doing it until the other kids put him in check and he realized he looked like an idiot. Also, I had a sixth grader who had an extreme crush on an eighth grader. At the end of the year, he gifted her massage oils with a creepy note, and she reported it to the administration. Then on the last day of school, he tried to steal the class picture I had with her in it, and a student caught him. I tried to defuse the situation, but the kids figured it out. He didn't hide his obsession very well. He was in my homeroom this past year, and I always made sure my picture was there before I left for the day. He also asked me if he could have an assignment of hers I kept as an example for a project. One day, he asked me how much a plane ticket cost to China. She was an international student and went back there for high school, and I told him it would be a little strange for him to visit someone halfway around the world who did not feel the same way and wasn't expecting him. He told me I was being disrespectful. Story 8. I organized an activity that was sort of like, never have I ever, but positive and meant to build empathy. Basically, a student would say, you're in my boat if, and whatever they say that is the same as you, you have to stand up and find another chair. Great activity. One of the girls, who I often found puzzling because she just did and said things that were nonsensical, started her period and got blood all over multiple chairs. Some kids start looking at the seats and have no idea what's going on. The girls in the class figure it out, but don't say anything. They just avoid said tainted chairs. The boys, however, are as dumb as a box of rocks and are touching it and sitting in the seats. I'm sitting there horrified since one. That's disgusting too. I didn't initially know who was pulling a carry in three. How the hell do I nonchalantly stop the activity to get this biohazard cleaned up and no one really notices? After a short observation of the students, I noticed that the one girl was the unfortunate cause of all this. I told her that she was to do a favor for me, and I stepped outside. I asked her if she knew that she started her period. And she said yes. I sent her to the office and then went back in the room for damage control. I honestly don't know how I concocted a magical excuse, but I told all the kids that we were invited to go to the library for silent reading time, but had to go now because all the good squishy seats would be taken if they didn't hustle. 
they believed me and I sent them down there. A few girls stayed behind that figured out what happened and I told them I knew and sent them as well. I finally get on the phone and inform the unfortunate janitor about the bloodbath in my room. Story 7. Not a student in particular, but a whole bunch of them. I was a substitute teacher for a few years on my university breaks, but last January was the worst middle school day I've ever had, 8th grade science class. I asked the kids to open their textbooks and work on the assignment. A girl shyly raises her hand and says, Miss, there's something inappropriate in my book. Of course, some kid drew a dick. I calmly tell her to erase it and move on. Three more kids say the same thing. I say, if you have something inappropriate in your book, please just erase it. Every kid starts whining about how there's dicks in their books. Since they won't shut up about it, I take the offending books and replace them with different books from the back of the room. Every single book had a huge dick drawn in it. All 90-something of them crudely drawn dicks, artistic dicks, Squidward fucking Spongebob. You name it, it was there. The kids rioted. I almost quit. Story 6. I had a classmate who had to give a presentation using PowerPoint. So there is a computer hooked up to a projector that is pointed at a screen that fills the wall. This guy sticks his USB with his presentation in the computer and it automatically loads the images he had on it in a gallery. He had a full folder of pictures of girls from his class he had downloaded from Facebook. That was kind of awkward. Story 5. I will relay a short story that my 7th grade bio teacher told us. In that class, we dissected a cow eyeball. The year before us, a student pocketed the lens of the eye. Looks like a yellowish, hard thing about the size of a peanut M&M. &M. In his next class, he stood up and swallowed it in front of everyone. Another teacher told me about a student he had who would come to school in different costumes, ninja, soldier, etc., and stay in character the whole day. I do not remember the details, but there was an incident in which he threw throwing stars during a talent show. Story 4. One student wanted to ask me if I had a doppelganger. What he actually said was, do you have a dingleberry? I also had a girl ask me what food stamps were, which isn't surprising because the district is very affluent. I explained, but she still seemed confused. So she asked what it means to blow a trucker for food stamps. Evidently, she was reading a book meant for a more mature audience, and her worldly knowledge hadn't caught up to her reading level yet. Story 3. After 10 years of middle school, I should have had a novel's worth. However, so many years of middle school decimates your brain, and as someone else said, middle schoolers are generally cringy most of the time. The kid who wrote, Mrs. Charpinette loves cockies on the board when he sincerely meant to write cookies definitely ranks high up there though. We all cringe that day. Edit. Guys, it didn't take me 10 years to finish middle school, I promise. Only 9. Seriously, I meant 10 years of teaching middle school, but I should have clarified because you all don't know me in real life. If you did, you'd know I love cockies and cookies. Story 2. Just finished my first year of teaching middle school. I had one particular student who did not view me as an authority and refused to work in my class. This was especially concerning because this student was placed in an advanced class and chose to not learn purely because of who the teacher was. This also meant that the student's classmates were well-behaved, gifted students. One day, while the whole class was completing an assignment, this student was not working. When I addressed the issue, the student threw a fit and started crawling around on the floor, underneath the other student's desk. Now, I don't know when you've last been in a middle school classroom, but the floor is absolutely filthy. The student thoroughly embarrassed themselves, as was evident by the looks received from the other students. The whole situation was extremely awkward for everyone, especially when the student realized that they would get no support from the other students. Story 1. Director of Technology here. I don't really have much to do with the kids at the school I work at, but I definitely have a cringy moment called down to the middle school from my office to debug a problem for a teacher. The classrooms in this building all have two doors. One door opens into the building hallways, the other opens to the outside. My office is across a field from the middle school, so I decide to just cut across the field and enter the side door to the classroom instead of going all the way around the field and entering the classroom from the hallway. Bear in mind that these outside doors are almost never used by anyone except for an occasional fire drill. I open the door and step in to see a room full of students facing away from me and towards their teacher. The student closest to me scrambles to click X on her browser, but not before I see full-on hardcore yaoi hentai. 
Did I mention I work at a Christian private school? She turns bright red, and with visibly trembling hands, she closes her laptop lid. I burst out laughing, which interrupted the class. The teacher looks to me in questioning confusion, and the students stare in silence. I casually walked over to her and said, loudly enough for the classroom to hear, Let's not look at memes and Facebook jokes at school, guys. Her flush red face contorted with fear suddenly relaxed, her trembling hands stilled. I laughed again and went and debugged the wireless access point issue I was called down for. No point getting her expelled over hormonal changes and curiosity. Yeah! Thanks for watching, and make sure to click the subscription button for more, more and more Franken stories. Hope see you soon! Bye bye, Weston, wow, bye!